Keisha McCauley, and you're watching AccessTV.org. Dedicated to the only serious choice, the gospel of Jesus Christ in music and the spoken word, you're watching Life Source Victory Television live with me, your host, Pastor J. Stan McCauley, inviting you to sit back and relax for the next eight minutes as we continue our journey into the life-changing, life-giving, everlasting word of the Most High God. My friends, it is indeed time for the most important eight minutes of the day, Bible study. Now, of course, it is my Bible study time that I spend with you. We try and do it each and every day right here at AccessTV.org on Facebook, Pinterest, and other social media around the world. Asking you to do your part in this ministry, which, of course, is to uh, share it with friends, family, and foe. That way, they also can stay in the know. On your screen, my friends, the life-changing, life-giving, everlasting word of the Most High God. And uh, let's get started. This is where we were when we were last together, which, of course, was yesterday. Reading out of Hebrews chapter 10, verse 23. Let's pick it up. Okay. Let us hold fast the profession of our faith without wavering, for he is faithful that promised. Now, you put your faith and trust in the atoning work of Jesus Christ upon the cross of Calvary. All right, now there's lots of pressures on the believers these days, a chief of which is uh, a, a, a pressure for you to conform to a politically correct mindset. All right, remember the battle of faith takes place in the mind. All right, let me repeat that. The battle of faith takes place in the mind. All right. The Bible says, present your body a living sacrifice, holy, acceptable unto God, which is your reasonable service. And be not conformed to this world, but be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind. All right. That means that the mind starts to receive the, um, how shall we say, the validation on information and how to best use it from the Holy Spirit, okay? Uh, until one receives the Holy Spirit, until one has a relationship with uh, the uh, uh, Messiah, until you have a relationship with Jesus, uh, you can't come into this newness of life. So the only way one, in, one, one analyzes information is based on the five senses. You know, what I see, what I hear, what I smell, what I taste, what I feel, you know, touch. Or the, the five sensory realm that brings information to the brain or into the mind. But there is no spiritual analysis. It's just a matter of life experience, what you've heard, what you've seen. But there's no there's no revelatory, there's no revelation, there's no input from the designer, if you will, from the architect, if you will. Uh, there's just access to information and, and what you should do with it. All right. Well, once the Holy Spirit comes on board, your mind gets renewed, all right? It has the refreshing of the presence of God to help you to uh, make right decisions that are morally based. And we live in a time when right decisions that are morally based are generally classified as wrong because they somehow don't serve the flesh and self and you doing so causes others to be convicted by your actions because in light of your actions, their actions are perceived wrong. Without you saying a thing, they see the right that you're doing and are convicted by it, so they don't like the feeling that, that they're somehow wrong because of uh, the things that you do. And, and so it gets back to that conviction feeling. Well, that's what the presence of God does. The presence of God convicts all right. And so when you're in a room full of people who uh, may not have a relationship with Jesus Christ, uh, you have a convicting force about you because greater is he that's in you than he that is in the world. Having said all that as a very long introduction, let us take a look at verse 23 again. Let us hold fast the profession of our faith. All right. Without wavering. All right. So do you really, really believe that Jesus is Lord? Is he really Lord of your life? All right. Or is that like church speak politically correct? You, you want to be church correct. 
All right. I mean, there's the political correctness of the world, and then there's that whole worldly, uh, there's that worldly politics, but there's also the 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 church politics and religiosity, where people have a form of godliness, uh, but denying the power thereof. And quite frankly, I'm not. I I, I think that the church politics uh, is worse uh, than the politics that you might uh, find associated with the world. But nonetheless, let us hold fast that faith without wavering. For he is faithful that has promised. So Jesus has made certain promises to us and we can count on him to deliver. And let us consider one another to provoke unto love and good works. All right. So as we consider each other, uh, when it says one another, it's talking about those who profess the same relationship. All right. You're not required, nor should you feel required to acquiesce to those who are non-believers and tread on the word of God with disdain. You have no reason whatsoever to feel as though you have to um, um, make them feel good while they um, spit in the face of the Lord. I was going to say something else, but uh, this is a gospel program. All right. So let us consider one another and to provoke unto love and good works. So as we as we consider one another, you know, we, we're supposed to be encouraging each other to do good things, to do good works, to, uh, to, to walk in love, and to express the agape love of God one to another, not forsaking the gathering of ourselves. Uh, uh, verse 25 at the top of the screen, please. There we go. And not forsaking the assembling of ourselves, together as the manner of some is but exhorting one another and so much the more as ye see the day approaching for if we sin willfully after that we have received the knowledge of the truth there remaineth no more sacrifice for sins but a certain fearful looking but a certain fearful looking for of judgment and fiery indignation which shall devour our adversaries. Okay, so if 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 those who are in opposition to the Lord, not necessarily your adversaries or my adversaries, uh, by extension of your by by virtue of your relationship with the Lord, by extension those who are adversaries of God, one could say are your adversaries, but they're not really your adversaries. The judgment and wrath is poured out for the adversaries of the Lord. Okay? Those who stand in opposition to the truth. Now, if you depart from the word, what remaineth for you? If you depart from the faith, if you depart from the profession of your faith, what remaineth? Having known the truth, having tasted thereof, having embraced it, and then to spit back in God's face and to step away, and to embrace the world as though you can be replugged into the world system uh, uh, and claim somehow ignorance of the light of Christ, of the sweet-smelling savor, to, to say that you somehow don't want to remember that, well, that's not possible, okay? Um, so there is now for you the same that is for the world. You there There's nothing left but judgment, all right? You can liken it to being rescued uh, by Hartford's uh, uh, bravest, okay, uh, Hartford Fire Department, Class A, uh, aggressive interior attacks. One reason why Hartford uh, insurance is so low, uh, because there's uh, one of the best fire uh, companies in the nation. So aggressive interior attack, they go in and they attack the fire. So here are these men and women come into your burning building risking life, limb, Scott pack on, and they rescue you, and you've been pulled out of harm's way. Uh, one guy fell through the floor. They got him out. He's doing good, and you remembered that you have a coin collection inside, so you run back in. Well, you know, and you do so against the wishes of others because they try to restrain you, and when they brought the other guy out who had fallen through the floor, you snuck away and ran back. There remaineth for you. No more rescues. No one knows you're in there. You're in there. You fall through the floor, exposed to the elements uh, that are surrounding uh, this life force called a fire. And you are 
and you, you, there's no hope for you. All right. Same thing when you depart from the Lord and go back into the world. Well, there is a judgment and a wrath that's going to be poured out on the world. Christ came not into the world to condemn it, but rather that through him the world might be saved. So it's not like God is, con you know, the world's condemned. God's on a rescue mission to, to bring those out of that condemnation. Now, if they reject the rescue plan, if they reject the rescuer, then there remaineth nothing but condemnation. Same thing here. That's the best analogy I can come up with. Verse 28. He that despised Moses' law died without mercy under two or three witnesses. Of how much sore punishment suppose ye shall he be thought worthy who hath trodden underfoot the Son of God and hath counted the blood of the covenant wherewith he was sanctified or where you were set aside by the shed blood of the Lamb. Okay. Uh, wherewith he was sanctified an unholy thing and hath done despite unto the spirit of grace all right so if this is the if this is the course that you that, that you take what what remains for you verse 30 top of the screen for we know him that hath said vengeance belongeth unto me i will recompense saith the lord and again the lord shall judge his people verse 31 it is a fearful thing to fall into the hands of the living god but call to remembrance the former days in which after that ye were illuminated ye endured a great fight of affliction partly whilst ye were made a gazing stock both by reproaches and afflictions and partly whilst ye became companions of them that were so used verse 34 for if ye had compassion of me in my bonds and took joyfully the spoils of your goods knowing in yourselves that ye have a heaven, have in heaven a better and an enduring substance. Cast not away, therefore, your confidence. Verse 35, top of the screen. Cast not away, therefore, your confidence, which hath great recompense of reward. For ye have need of patience, that after ye have done the will of God, ye might receive the promise. For yet a little while, and he that shall come will come and will not tarry. Now the just shall live by faith. But if any man draw back, my soul shall have no pleasure in him. The quote is, the justified shall live by his faith. All right, Or the just shall live by his faith. Not your act of faithing. Not you believing but his faith the just shall live by his faith we the justified live because of the faithfulness and the obedience and the outward manifestation of that faith that christ had when he willingly went to the cross of calvary to pour out life's precious blood for the remission of our sins my sins your sins right personalize and make it personal jesus went to the cross for you if you were the only one that gets saved he did it for you okay so make it personal all right so the just shall live by faith but if any man draw back my soul shall have no pleasure in him verse 39 top of the screen but we are not of them that draw back unto perdition but of them that believe to the saving of the soul and this now Finally, brings us to Hebrews chapter 11, which is where I wanted to start, but I can't start at Hebrews chapter 11 because I always have to go back to the beginning of Hebrews chapter 1, verse 1, and read all the way up to 11 so that the foundation and the groundwork can be laid down for why chapter 11 is so important as we talk about the heroes of faith. 
okay, and the importance of faith in light of the law. The law points out the inability of your works to deliver you into a place where you can stand before the righteous, holy God and yet walk away unscathed. It has to be by His grace, right, by His mercy, that He embraces you and brings you in, but it requires your faithing in Him. All right, my friends, our time together has come to an end, unfortunately, so we will continue this, hopefully tomorrow. Extremely busy next three or four days with production. I hope to get to Bible study. But I will be away from the studio and uh, will be uh, very, very busy out on production. And so logistically, it just may not be possible to do them. But I'm going to make every effort I can to be here tomorrow to do uh, the eight minute Bible study. God bless you all. Keep you strong in faith. Remember, when it's all said and done, the only thing you need to know is this fact. And that is, that is, of course, that Jesus Christ saves and changes lives. Won't you call on his name today and allow him to be Lord of your life? All right? Oh, all, also, before we sign off, uh, check out the interview that Jonathan Small did with uh, gubernatorial candidate Tom Foley. Uh, the network's going to try and bring you as many interviews with uh, the people that are running for governor and eventually a city council and mayor here in the city of Hartford as we possibly can because we're going to bring you the information you need in order to make uh, a great uh, decision as it relates to those that um, have the charge over you, okay? God bless you all. Keep you strong in the pain. See you tomorrow. Bye-bye. Father changed direction, the mother's all cracked up, living inside her pain.